ads we see them everywhere while driving down the road on our television screens especially while browsing the internet google likes to track us and our every movement while we are looking for a jacket on one particular site and we decide to go to another website and guess what on the sides we see ads off jackets yes you can use the brave browser which will block ads or you can install ad blocker plugins but this will really solve the problem for a single device. What about the other devices in your home or office network? This is where the Pi hole comes handy. It is actually a network wide solution that blocks ads, malware and trackers, giving you a much more of a better internet experience, a much more faster and safer experience. I currently have Pi hole set up on my home network and it is running on the Raspberry Pi 5. Yes, given the name of a Pi hole, you might think that this only runs on the Raspberry Pi, but it actually runs on any Linux device. For this demo, I will be running it on the Raspberry Pi 4. This tutorial should work on either devices and it should work on any general Linux device. Hey, if you guys are new here, my name is Alson Broto. I'm an infrastructure engineer currently working on my DevOps skills and sharing my knowledge with you guys. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So what is a pile and how does it work? So I've given you a little bit of a brief introduction of what it does. It blocks ads, malware and trackers. And I've got a diagram over here which will show you how it actually sits into your network. Once a pie hole is installed on your network, it will replace your current DNS IP address and it will act as a DNS system. So these are the devices on your network. This can be your mobile phones, your laptops, uh, your PS3, PS4. So queries from the devices on your local network will go to your DNS, that will be the pie hole. And the pie hole has a list called ad lists. Ad lists are basically the list that it will check and see if these are good websites or bad. Bad websites are blocked, good websites are let true. So if the um, queries are actually matching the websites that are on the ad list, the pie hole will block those requests and it will not be sent out of your network. On the other hand, queries which are actually not on the ad list will actually go true. What Pihole does is it will see through the ad list once again and if there's nothing matching it, it will send it to an upstream DNS server. So this can be your Google DNS server, Cloudflare and so on. So as you can tell, the Pihole acts like more for traffic light. It will see what's on the ad list if it is it will give a red and it will block it and if it's actually nothing matching the ad list it will actually go through a green and it's passed on. To run Pihole I will be installing it using Docker Compose. If you are not familiar with Docker Compose it is a very powerful tool used to simplify and manage container applications. Docker Compose generally uses a YAML file. It is a single file which acts like a blueprint for the whole lifecycle of the application and in this file, you can uh, set up the services, the network, the volumes, pretty much the whole shebang. Before you start on with this tutorial, you'll require a couple of items. Firstly, is a Linux device. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 for this demo. Uh, SSH connection needs to be enabled. You will need a wired connection because the following tutorial doesn't work on a Wi-Fi adapter. Basic terminal knowledge, but don't worry about this. I will go through each command step by step. The first step is installing docker. So let's SSH into our Linux device. Before we install docker, we should make sure that our system is running the latest software. So for this, we'll do sudo apt get update. And once that is done, sudo apt get upgrade. Depending how old your system is, this might take some time, but if you regularly update your software, this should be very quick. Once this is complete, now it's finally time to install Docker. So let me just clear the screen for you guys. Fortunately, Docker gives us a handy script so let me just paste it in. I'll place all these items in the description box down below and you can just run the script and let, us, and let it do its thing. Looks like that has installed successfully. 
The next item is actually to add the non-root user to the Docker group. By default, only users with administrative privileges can run containers, that is the root user. And if you're logged in as a non-root user, you can use the pseudo prefix or you can actually add the non-root non -root user to the Docker group. So we'll be doing that right now. So to give the current user administrative privileges, you can use the following command. Let me just clear the screen out. sudo user mode dash ag docker dollar curly brackets user and that's it the next item that we need to install is docker compose by default docker compose is installed using pip3 and python3 so let's go ahead and install that so for this i've got a couple of commands which again will be down in the description box Now we have installed pip3 and python3. Let me clear the screen. With the following command, you can now install docker compose, sudo apt install docker compose. The next item is a very nice and important addition. With the following command, you can configure the Raspberry Pi to automatically start the Docker services whenever it boots up. So let me clear the screen first. And you can use this command, sudo systemctl enable docker. With this in place, containers with a restart policy such as always or unless stop will reboot automatically once the Raspberry Pi reboots itself and the Docker uh, service comes back. Now it's finally time to install PyHole. So we will be making a new directory for the PyHole. So make directory mkdir PyHole change directory to that. Once you're in this directory, it's time to create the Docker compose file. So nano docker compose.yaml. Now for the docker compose file, you can actually get a template from the main website, from the PyHole website. So if you were to go to PyHole and you click on docker install, it takes you to their GitHub page and you will see an example configuration for the YAML file. But for this instance, we will be copying the YAML file which I've created and it's on my GitHub page. So we can just copy this. Once again, this is all gonna be down in the description box. And we can paste this in here. There are a couple of items that you will need to check with your network and you will need to change. So let me just go over to the configuration and let's just see what this YAML file is actually doing. So firstly, the difference over here is we are creating a network called PyHole Network using the driver Mac VLAN. And this is actually on the Ethernet adapter, ETH0. So this is my physical wired Ethernet adapter. And I'm using a subnet range of 10.0.0.0 slash 8. Generally on home networks, you'll have the 192.168.0 range. So this is something that you will need to check on it's your 19 home hours. network. And I've given it a gateway IP address. So this is currently my gateway IP address of 10.0.0.1. Going to the top of the configuration, we have the container name, the host name, and over here we have given it a static IP address. So for this instance, I'm going to use um, 10.0.0.52. Let me just change that. These are the ports that it will connect to. I'm currently in Europe, London. And for the web password, make sure to use a very uh, strong password. For this demo, I will be using Alston. For the volumes, please make sure to change the username. So this will be your home directory username. So let me 
change that back. Same with the same place over here. And as I mentioned before, when we have enabled Docker service to automatically start if the Raspberry Pi reboots itself, it comes handy at this section because this has a restart policy of unless stopped. So if anything were to happen with our Raspberry Pi and it automatically crashes and comes back up, this container itself will come back up as well. So before I actually save this file, I'm actually going to see if that IP is free. So let me just do a quick thing, 52, request timeout. So that means I have a free IP there. Make sure to firstly use an ethernet adapter, which is a physical wired ethernet adapter and not a Wi-Fi adapter because this doesn't work with it. The next thing is to make sure that you're using this correct subnet range and give it a correct gateway IP address. Once you dial that, then you can check the static IP address for the container and give it a secure password and make sure that the volumes are in the correct place. Once all this is done, you can save this file. So we are pretty much there right now. We have installed Docker, we have installed Docker Compose, we have got the YAML file ready. Now it's just time to give the Raspberry Pi a reboot and then we can deploy the container. Once your system is back up from its reboot, now it's time to deploy the container. So what we're gonna do is docker compose up dash d. Dash d basically means it is gonna be running in detach mode. So what this does is it will run the container in the background of the terminal so it won't receive any input or display any output. Let's go ahead and run the command. I'm in the wrong directory right now, so let me just change the directory to pyho and run the command now. So as you can see, it's created the network, pyho network with the driver Mac VLAN, and it's currently just downloading the image. Looks like it's completed its processes. So now it's time to just check if it's running. So we can run docker ps command, and this will show the status. So we have the container ID image, and it's created 35 seconds ago, 17 seconds it's been up and it's healthy. So that's all good. Once this is actually up, we can go to our browser and we can go to that static IP address that we have configured in our YAML file. So for my case, it is 10.0.0.52 admin slash admin and let's click enter. And there you go. So this is the dashboard login page for the Pi hole. And this is where you should have configured your secure password. In my case, it is Alston login. And as you can see, this is the dashboard of the Pi hole. There are currently zero of everything because there's no traffic going to it right now. As you can see at the top right corner, we have the ad list domains on ad list. So we have over hundred K on there. Now it's time to make some changes on your local router to make sure that it can actually receive traffic. So we will be changing the local router's DNS IP to the IP address that you have configured for your Pi hole. My internet router can be accessed to my phone because I'm using the Amazon Eero router devices, which was provided with my um, broadband provider, TalkTalk. Talk. So for my settings, I'll need to go to settings, network settings, Go to DNS, which is going to be a default. Change that to customize DNS. And over here, I'll give my IP address for my Pi hole, which is 10.0.0.52. Let's save that. Need to give my device a reboot. Let's go ahead and do that. So the reboot is completed. And as you can see, this is already updating. So I've got a total of 131 queries done nine queries have been blocked so this percentage of blockage is less than seven percent at the moment to make this more secure we can actually configure the upstream dns servers so let's go to settings go to the dns tab so it's currently using google dns servers we can uncheck this and if we go to our browser and go to the cloudflare family
Cloudflare currently has the 1.1.1.1 range and it actually has a very specific DNS IP addresses for families. So over here it has two flavors. So the 1.2 is for no malware and the 1.3 is for no malware or adult content. So I'm gonna go with the latter. So the details are just down here. So the primary DNS is 1.3. Just copy that over in the custom IP address field. Secondary is 03. I'll use the recommended settings over here. And to save the changes, just click on save over here. Now it's time to test how the ad blocking actually works. I'm currently on a machine that is not protected by the PiHo or the DNS servers. This is completely isolated. And I'm gonna to go to independent.co.uk. And there you go, there's an ad right here. I expected some ads on the side as well, but I guess they're just having one ad right now, one ad banner. Now I will go on my local machine, which is actually protected by the PiHo, and we'll see if this ad shows up. In a new tab, independent, uk. and there you go no ads on the side no ads at the bottom i guess as well yeah as you can see that ad is missing because the raspberry pi or should i say the pi hole has effectively blocked that domain back to the dashboard of the pi hole i would just like to show you if you go down to the ad list sections it is currently pre-installed with an ad list from Stephen Black's hosts. This has all the popular top uh, rated, I guess, ad blockers and malware sites that's already on the list. But if you would like more ad lists to be added into you, you can go to this website, which is firebog.net. And as you can see, they have lists for suspicious lists, advertising lists, tracking, malicious, and so on. So the list in green color are the ones that you can apply and your browsing experience won't be hit with websites that you actually use and are blocked. So these are actually kind of more of a safe, safe uh, list, safe ad lists. Whereas the blue ones, if you add them, they might actually block some of the, some of the maybe well-known sites as well. Currently on my home system, I do not have any of these lists in there but I do plan on getting the green ones in at some point. A quick overview of how the PyHole is running on my home network. So over here you can see the last 24 hours, how many queries have been come true, the client activity, the query type, and also the upstream servers. On the top you can see the total queries, the amount of queries that have been blocked, and also the percentage, which is kind of low, it could get a bit higher, I think, if I were to add more ad lists in. If you made it this far, you have a network-wide solution to block ads using the PyHole, and along the way, you have also got exposure to Docker Compose. If you found this video useful, you may want to check out this video right here, where I installed RetroPy on the Raspberry Pi. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one.